Fleet code problem number 378, cave smallest element in a sorted matrix. So in the last video, I think I showed everyone how to solve this problem using binary search, but in this one, I wanna try explaining the heap approach. So if we look at this matrix, we can see that each row kind of looks like its own list. And if we consider it as its own list, then it's going to be sorted along that dimension, right? So 1, 5, 9 is a sorted list, 10, 11, 13 is a sorted list, and so on. So this reminds you of a certain operation that maybe you've learned about in merge sort. And using this merging operation will help us solve this problem very efficiently. So let's take a look at, let's take a closer look at what exactly this means. So I've reproduced the matrix here. We have 1, 5, 9, 10, 11, 13, same numbers. And what we're going to do is we're going to start at the beginning of each list. Remember, we're considering each row as its own separate list. And then we're going to push them onto a heap. A heap is going to be useful here because we're going to be able to extract the smallest element in constant time. Because the smallest element for a min heap, at least, will always be at the top. So we look at 1, 10, 12, and we insert them. So that looks like this, 1, 10, and finally we have 12. Okay, so the property of a heap is that everything that is greater than the root is going to be below it. And that's going to be the same for every subtree. So that's a very important heap property we're going to take advantage of here in order to extract the smallest element the most efficiently. So here we're going to take one and remove it in constant time and process it. Let's say we print it out. And then we're going to have to push the next item in that list. So that will be five, right? So five will take one's place. And notice that the heap property is still preserved here because the smallest element is at top. So we don't have to do any reorganizing. Okay, then we do the same thing. We remove five and we process it. So that means printing it out. And then we're going to look at nine. So inserting nine into the heap will look like this. Again, 9 is still the smallest element, so we proceed. We take it out and reprint it. Okay, so let's just write that down really quickly. Okay, now we have 1, 5, and 9. Notice we have the three smallest elements in this matrix now, so we're making good progress. And we finished processing this entire row, or this entire list. So now we only have 10, 11, 13, 12, 13, 15 to consider. Two lists left. Okay, so notice that there are only going to be two nodes in this heap from here on out. Why? Because we only have two arrays left to merge. So we're going to have to reorganize this heap so that the heap property is reserved, is preserved. And how are we going to do that? We're going to make sure that every node is going to be less than or equal to every node that is below it. Because we want to make sure that we remove the minimum element most efficiently. So I'm not going to go into the details of the heapify operation, but if you need to understand that a little better, then there are some other resources out there that you can look to. But let's just say we perform the heapify operation and the heap property is preserved. What will, that, what will that look like? So it will look something like this. Where 10 is once again at the top and the smallest element. Okay, now we proceed as normal, right? So now we're going to remove the 10 because that's the smallest. And then we're going to print it out. 
and then we're going to push the 11 on there. Now 11 is still smaller than 12, so we're going to remove it and print it out. And then we're going to push 13. Now notice that if we push 13, the heat property isn't preserved. So we need to heapify once again to preserve the heat property. What will that look like? That means that these two elements will literally be swapped. So we have 12 here and then 13 there. Okay, so now we can proceed as normal and remove 12. And print it out. And then the next item in that same row is going to be 13. So we have 13 here. And this is fine because they're equal, the smallest element, not strictly smallest, but the smallest element is still at the top. So we can remove it and just print it out. And then the next element will be 15, right? So we're going to do that. And then we're going to push 15 on there. Now we're going to have to do a heapify operation to swap these values. And that will put 13 on the top, and on the bottom will go 15. Now notice these are the only two elements left in our matrix. So it suffice to say that we will finish the algorithm once we extract 13 and then finally 15. So we have 13 right here, and then we have 15. So our original problem was to find the kth smallest element, and k equals 8 in the original example. So we're going to take the k minus 1 if index and return that. So 8 minus 1 is 7. We have 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So we get our answer. Notice that I really didn't have to go through this entire matrix in order to find the answer. I only had to do k removals in order to find the k smallest element. But I only did it to show everyone what it would be like to find any such element or any such k in this matrix. So let's go to the implementation. OK, so first we're going to have to define a couple of variables, rows and columns, for example, and n will be equal to the length of the matrix. The column will also equal 0. And we're going to define a heap. OK. And then we're going to have a while loop, because at first, we want to push these three elements onto the heap, right? 1, 10, and 12. So we have to go down the first column and push all those elements on there. So I put row here because you're really going down, you're really changing the row index in order to go down a column here. So that's just one point to be careful of when you're working with matrices. So while row is less than n, we're going to insert some stuff into the heap. So Let's make a, a new variable, and this is going to be a tuple, key value pair. So matrix row call, and the second item in this tuple will just be the row and column information. Remember that implementation detail I was mentioning before. Okay. So that's a new node. And we're going to make use of a library in Python called heapq. And this is a really basic library that's already 
imported into the, the user interface for leak code. So it's called heap queue, and then we're going to use heap push. We're going to give it the heap, and we're going to give it the item that we're pushing in. And then we're going to implement or increment the row. Okay, so now we have all three elements of this matrix inside the heap. The next thing to do is to iterate through each list and start doing the comparisons that we were talking about before. So remember, we only have to do k removals. So I'm going to have a for loop that goes from 0 to k minus 1. And then we're going to say heapq.heappop from the heap. This is going to get the smallest element from the heap in constant time. And we're going to get a tuple from that. So we're going to extract matrix value and coordinates. Now, from the coordinates, we're going to extract the rolling column. And then we want to make sure that we never go out of bounds in this matrix. So if the column minus 1 is less than n, then we can proceed. We do column minus 1 because we want to make sure that when we're at the end here and we try to push the next element onto the heap, we don't go out of bounds. So we're going to do heap q dot heap push. And here we're going to say we're going to create a new variable called new item and it's going to be equal to matrix row call plus one, right? Because we're getting the next item in that same list. And then these are just going to be the coordinates. So we're going to push a new item on there. I realize this is not as readable because this is called new item, this is called new node. So let's just switch this to node. And then new item. New item should be new node. Okay, so we've done that, and this is just going to keep looping and looping, and at the end, we can return the matrix value. So let's see how that works. Uh, some misspelling there. Oh, right, so heap push needs the, the heap. Right, so I did the arithmetic incorrectly here. It should be if column less than n minus 1, right? Because we want to be, be 1 before the end so that when we're going to the next element, right, we're assured that it is there. Okay, so now it works. And we can try running the whole thing. Okay, so great. What is the time complexity here? Well, we know that we have to do this whole removal process k times. And we know that the heapify function, it is known that the heapify function is logarithmic in the number of nodes in the heap. And the number of nodes in the heap, at most, in the worst case, it will be the number of rows in the matrix, right? Or the number of lists we're considering. So here we had three rows, therefore the worst possible number of nodes that we will have in the heap is three. So in the general case, we have big O of k log n, right? Because n is the number of rows in the matrix. All right, well, thank you for watching this video, and I'll see you later.